Good morning, everyone. This is Julie McDonald with Microcom Technologies, and I'd like to thank all of you for attending today's webinar with TP-Link. Today's hosts are Ron Dennis, the National Sales Manager, and Vincent Tu, their product engineer. Both of them will be presenting today. If anyone has any questions, please submit them in the question box, and Ron or Vincent will answer them at the end of today's presentation. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here today. I am finished for now. Please go ahead and take it on over. <clears throat> thank you very much, everyone, and we appreciate you taking the opportunity to allow us to be here. And uh, with that, we're going to get started. My name is Ronald Dennis. I'm the National Sales Manager uh, for the B2B channel. And Vincent Tu, our product engineer, is also in the room with me. With that, we'll begin. What I want to do first is I just want to give you guys a brief overview of who TP-Link is, if you're not familiar. Uh, and give you some information on how large we are and some of the capabilities that we have. We started, uh, TP-Link was established in 1996. Uh, in 2008, they established their presence here in the United States. 2011, uh, we became the world's number one provider of consumer networking uh, products. 2014, uh, the brand became the number three brand overall in the U.S., uh, we're providing networking hardware and solutions. And in 2015, the brand became the fastest growing brand in the U.S., and we became number two as the fastest growing brand in the U.S. We have about uh, 26,000 employees worldwide. Uh, we have a total factory production size of about 5 million square feet. Uh, every 4.8 seconds, one of our products is sold somewhere in the world. Uh, since 2018, we've sold over 150 million units, and since our inception, we've sold 1.2 billion units uh, of TP-Link products somewhere around the world. Uh, and in 2018, basically for the last eight years, I should say, we have been uh, the number one Wi-Fi. We have been providing. We've been the number one Wi-Fi provider uh, of uh, wireless access and networking hardware consecutively. So every year since 2011, we've been the number one provider uh, worldwide. And with that, we're going to get into the topics that we want to talk about today. Basically, we want to talk about where does TP-Link fit in the retail environment. I know that's a broad, in, uh, a broad category, but we have been very successful in a lot of areas uh, when it comes to uh, the retail environment. And we've pinpointed out some specific areas where we've been successful. And then we've also uh, outlined and pinpoint some of the specific products that we have been that we have used in those areas. So POS, uh, point of sale systems, Wi-Fi access points, uh, digital signage, kiosks, and security cameras. Uh, those are the areas where we've been very successful in terms of connectivity uh, from a Wi-Fi side or from the TP-Link hardware side. Uh, connective a POS uh, for credit and credit card terminals, cash registers, CPUs and phone systems. The Wi-Fi would be more like in-store Wi-Fi, has become an integral part of uh, store marketing and retailers. Uh, also digital signage. We have a lot of large digital signage companies that we work with for schools, staple centers, things like that. Kiosks and direct for more like directory and promotional information, online ordering and uh, out-of-stock products. Security camera, obviously, for in the retail environment, let's say in a con retail um, grocery store, it helps provide spoilage prevention and customer safety. So some of our POS solutions. So the POS technology uh, or technology that we've, uh, we're gonna show here on this screen basically helps you understand how the TP-Link product is used. Uh, at the top, uh, the, internet, uh, the internet will connect the TP-Link router like the uh, R600 VPN and will connect to our core switch our core switch would be like the T1600G28PS. And then to the right of the screen is a sample of our wired solution. For example, self kiosks, similar to the McDonald's uh, solution that we have currently. And it's just about all of the McDonald's around the United States. Uh, our TP-Link product is in there. If you go into a McDonald's and you go to one of those portable kiosks, the TP-Link hardware is in that, is in that uh, kiosk, uh, helping to provide the POS as well as the uh, communication to the back end server. And then uh, uh, to the top left, you'll see samples of the Wi-Fi solution in the POS integration, uh, connecting the handheld POS devices for servers and restaurants. And then also, if you go into Applebee's and some of those types of places, you'll see a POS or credit card payment 
solution on the table. Uh, we work very well in those areas as well. Some of our, as I as I mentioned, some of our, our key solutions, as I said, are in are in McDonald's and other large menu, and other large retail environments. Some of the products that we are, are going to be talking about specifically uh, in a few slides coming up, these are the products that are being used in our uh, POS solution. We have our core switching. These are the MSRP prices. Obviously, your prices will come from Microcom, and they'll provide you with uh, their price point to you, but this is MSRP. Uh, also, our edge switches, Wi-Fi solutions from our, our EAP uh, access points, indoor and outdoor, and then our routers. And we have several different types of routers, uh, obviously from different price points, depending on the application that you will need uh, use for the router or the switch. Some of the key compliances for PCI that we have been able to work with some of our retailers about uh, and, and understand, these are the core principles to, in order to have a compliant uh, uh, POS solution. Compliance development to encourage and enhance cardholder data security. And then obviously the uh, DSS is the uh, data security standard. Uh, so this is basically the standard that is used when we work with uh, any of our point of sale uh, manufacturers uh, when it comes to complying with PCI. So see, these are six requirements for PCI and DSS compliancy. Obviously, build and maintain a secure network, protect the card hurdles data, uh, maintain a uh, 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 maintain a vulnerable management program, uh, and then implement strong control measures, regular monitoring and test networks. You're obviously doing a testing to make sure the network is secure, and then maintain uh, an information security policy. Of those, these are the three main areas that we have been working with some of our uh, some of our resellers on uh, and some of our POS customers on to help them maintain their environment. So from that perspective, the checklist for us is we build and maintain a secure network. So that's set up, and we'll talk more about that uh, from the product side. It's set up a user and password away from the factory default, segregate your network. Number two, implement strong controlled measures. And that's like connecting uh, segregated networks together, additional access control. Then obviously three is reg uh, regularly monitor and test your networks. This is for intrusion prevention and things of that nature. So rogue AP survey and things like that. So with that, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move right into the actual product setup and procedures for the network switch introduction. And this, you'll be hearing Vincent's voice. He actually recorded this. And he is here in the room with us as well to answer any questions that you might have after you listen to this recording. This is about uh, 10 to 12 minutes. And with that, here we go. There are four types of Ethernet switches provided by QPP. The unmanaged switch, easy managed switch, smart switch, and fully managed switch. To identify those different types of switches, you can check their model number and their physical voice on the switch. The model number of a main switch always starts with letter T and L, such as TL SP108, which represents eight port of main PW switch. The Easy Smart Switch share the same naming convention. Start with the TL. Additionally, all easy smart switches model number ends with the letter E to identify the difference. If the model number starts with the letter T and following with numbers represents managed switches, either fully managed switch or smart managed switch, such as T1600G 28TS. Fully managed switch comes with a RJ45 and micro USB console port on the switch for out of band control. The smart managed switch does not have console port and can be controlled with the web GUI, telnet, or SSH. All switches other than a managed switch has a management IP address for a control setup. The management IP address by default are all 192.168.0.1. Do 
don't have to change this management address if you don't want to change the settings. However, please double check if the default IP address 192.168.0.1 conflicts to any device on your network, such as your internet router. You can change the IP address on the switch or on the router to avoid the conflict. Setting your router address array from switch default is a better choice since it can prevent the IP address conflict by accidentally plugging a new switch by you or someone else in later time. Assign different IP address to each of your switch if you have more than one switch. Put them on the temporary network one at a time instead of power all of them on and then start your settings. The TP-Link SMB unmanaged switch supports 802.1p and DSCP quality of service for voice phone system and IGMP bodycast looping for bodycasting videos. Those features will direct the passing through data packets to their right direction in the right timing. No manual setting is required. The easy smart, smart and fully managed switches can be configured through the user-friendly graphical web interface. Using your browser on the computer to access the setup page, the easy smart switch can additionally be discovered and managed by the Windows utility. The management software is available to download in the support section of the product page. Smart managed switch and fully managed switches can be accessed through Telnet with factory default. The default administrator user's name is admin and the password is the admin as well. The open Telnet connection allows you access the switch easily. And it is strongly recommended that you change the admin credential away from the default after you set up the switch. To enhance your network security, encrypt your control traffic with SSH connection is recommended. After you set up the secure SSH service, you can turn off the telnet service. If you want to use out-of-band network control, the console port on fully managed switch is the way to set up and monitoring the switch. Thank you for that. Separate network resource into different pieces and assign user privileges is important for network security. To make your network into sessions, you can do it physically or logically. Divide networks physically is the most easy way to divide your network. It sometimes happens naturally when you hire different vendors to install different network systems in your location. For example, your phone and networking company may build a rack of switches for your corporate network. And then your new hired digital surveillance system company may build a separate rack of switches connecting only to the security cameras. It certainly will cost more money on the switches, but it makes the management job much easier. Another example is that when you want to build a network disk array, it is better that you dedicate the network capacity for data replication instead of sharing the resource to other general purpose. In the situation that you have relatively low number of networking connections and you want to keep flexibility growing your network, using the core isolation can divide a physical switch into different networks, just like you have multiple switches in front of you. The most practical way using port isolation to divide your network is 
that you would have some frequent units need a small number of connections, such as alarm system, and you don't want to set up a whole new switch for that. You can simply divide some of the port for this special purpose. Port isolation is an easy way to divide a single switch into logical units. But how about across the switches? The 802.1Q VLAN is the solution. 802.1Q VLAN, virtual VLAN, is the de facto and IEEE related standard to create network group logic. You can assign any port to participate any logical group across switches. And since the AO2.1Q is the industry standard, switches from different manufacturers can work together seamlessly. You can set up the VLAN statically or dynamically. To set up a static VLAN, you need only change the settings on the switches. Dynamic VLAN requires external radio server to complete the setup. Dynamic VLAN is a key feature to realize the BYOD, bring your own device, policy, in business, and the personal VLAN setup for hospitality. Send to the wired network to connect different wireless clients into different sections of the network. You can physically separate the network, or you can create VLAN statically or dynamically. Creating SSID to VLAN mapping is easy. You can simply configure the rule of mapping on the Omana wireless controller, and that will work. If you want to create personal dynamic VLAN to each wireless client, you need an extra radius server to create the user policy. Now you have divided networks and given different privileges to different users. But how to solve those separated networks together? If you have a physical separated network, you'll need individual routers to connect divided networks. If you divide your network using VLAN, you need a router which can handle VLAN volume. And if you need those VLAN or capable accessing the internet, the router has to have multi network address translation feature. Those two features can be found in most layer 3 switches. If the cost of the layer switch is too high for the job, you can simply use the TL-R600 VPN for VLAN routing and multi-net translation. To set up the security to protect your network, you can set up the password to your wireless SSID to prevent unauthorized access. You can also set up dynamic credential for wireless connection with external radius server. For 
wired connection poor security static VLAN and dynamic VLAN can help for port level security for transmission security you can set up ACL on the smart switch or fully managed switch. Additionally, the TLR600PPN router provides another chance to authenticate user with web portal or 802.1x authentication on the gateway. Your ability to only one having the wireless network. You can sometimes see other available wireless network when you search. Normally, user, especially as user, will connect to the wireless provided by you. If a malicious access point was set up using the SSID of your business, the malicious station can fish separate of your clients. It is important to prevent the situation happen. And we should also regularly watch over the adjacent wireless providers. Rope AB scanning can list the adjacent wireless providers. You can then review the listed wireless stations are malicious or it is part of your network. All right, thank you very much, everyone. I know there's a lot of information, uh, but we're going to try and uh, answer any questions you might have uh, at, at the end of this. Uh, one of the summaries that we want to talk about here, basically, is just to summarize. TP-Link Wired and Wireless uh, our Portfolio provides a complete solution to support the POS solution. We just focus on POS right now, but we, uh, it's a broad subject, and we have a lot of clients that work in that area. Uh, so, uh, but we have a the TP-Link switch can be used in multiple different types of applications. Uh, the TP-Link switches provide the technical capability to secure your network and meet the PCI and DSS compliance. And as you can see from the uh, example that Vincent used, uh, it's very simple to set the TP-Link product up. It's very user friendly. Uh, our intuitive operating system simplifies the setup and it helps to protect your network. And all the products discussed can be purchased, as we mentioned through microcom. One of the important aspects of the TP-Link product is that we provide a limited lifetime warranty on all the products that we just discussed. So if you, if, as long as you don't deliberately destroy the product and there's some sort of uh, malfunction or, or issue with the product, they have a limited lifetime warranty and we will, we will return that product for you and get you out a new product. All of our product, uh, uh, all of TP-Link customers have a uh, dedicated support line that you can go to. You can also uh, email us and we'll be more than happy to provide you with either uh, verbal or uh, email uh, chat type support that we can provide you guys. Uh, also in our partner portal there is a uh, is a specific hotline for all of our partners as well as marketing material, deal registration information, sales tools, uh, promotions, our UAP information and certification and training uh, options available as well. Again, my name is Ronald Dennis. I'm the National Sales Manager, uh, and Vincent, who you just heard, we're both here in the room. We'll be more than happy to answer any questions you might have. And with that, we are done, and back to you, uh, Julie. Ron, thank you so very much. Vincent as well. Uh, we really enjoyed that presentation, and I do have a couple questions for you. Let me go ahead and start with the first one. Uh, and thank you for talking about support, because that was one of the first questions here. Um, awesome. I, I, excellent, yes. So regarding your support, um, I believe it covers 24 hours. Is that correct? Well, our support is six to six. Uh, we, have determined, we have found that 24-hour support is not necessary for the majority of our clients. Obviously, uh, if there is an issue that you need support on, you can go to the chat line. But our support is from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. 
Excellent, Ron. That works very well. Um, and then you mentioned um, regarding that support um, or troubleshooting, so to speak. Do you you can provide that over the phone and via email? Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. A lot of the times we get a lot of calls from customers that say, "Hey, look, I'm having a problem right now. How can you help me?" And we can get one of our engineers on the line. More a lot of times it's Vince. It could be me if it's not too technical, and we can troubleshoot and work with them. If not, we can escalate it. But normally either over the phone or via a chat within a very quick period of time. Normally you can get us over the phone most of the time. You can shoot an email as well, and then you can say, I'm having an issue, and then someone will either respond back in an email with the phone number that you can call, or we can uh, chat with you via our chat as well. Excellent, Excellent. thank you for thank that. You. Can you tell us um, where TP-Link products are manufactured? Okay, that's a good question. The majority of our products are manufactured in China. However, we do have some products that are now being manufactured in Vietnam. Now, the reason that we, we moved some of our manufacturing to Vietnam was because of the uh, trade and tariff issues uh, that the United States and China were involved with. Fortunately, since, this, uh, since there has been no real uh, effect on our customers per se, because what we have done is we have, been, we have uh, basically absorbed most of the tariffs uh, costs, so that will be translated or are passed on to our clients. But to answer your question specifically, they're in China and Vietnam. Excellent, thank you, Ron. Next question here, and I think you did touch on this. If you don't mind, we're gonna, I'm gonna ask, um, is there a controller built into the managed switch and is it free? I'm gonna let Vincent answer that. Go ahead. Okay, so we do have the different product line. For the jet stream, it is uh, uh, for the open control uh, that is uh, following the SSH and uh, SNMP protocol. So you can use the third party uh, controller software. And we do have the closed system that is the Omada. Right now in Omada system, it has only the wireless access point controlled by the controller. And the controller can be hardware based, you have to purchase, and or the software based, it is free to download on the website. And in the future, uh, not, not very far, uh, just next month, that uh, we're going to have the test uh, the Omana switch, and we're going to quickly release in the, the, the first quarter of 2020. So the switch will have the con a software controller built inside of it as well. No, not, not in the switch, a uh, separate controller, but the, the Omada switch can be controlled by the switch. Controlled by the switch. We do have a, a free software that you can download as well. So you buy the, the, uh, the hardware controller, which uh, obviously you guys said it's an OC200. You can use that uh, as a hardware controller, which you have to purchase, or you can download the software and use that on one of your uh, uh, laptops or your uh, server devices. Excellent. Thank you both to Ron and Vincent. Appreciate that. A couple more questions here for you. Sure. Does TP Link work with ISPs and their tower switch needs? Well, okay, so you're asking the internet service providers tower switch needs in terms of, okay, well, let's put it this way. We work with a lot of internet service providers, our routers and our switches. But in terms of, I'm not sure specifically what they mean. Do you know? Uh, okay, so so if, if that is uh, referring to the backbone switch, that we're not focusing on that. We do have the layer two, uh, full managed, and layer three switches, but uh, most of them are focused on the distribution layer. Right. Excellent. Thank you guys very much. Next question here for you. Um, do you have any compatibility issues with the access points of different companies and your switches? We don't have the compatibility issue, but uh, different clients uh, have in the different performance with our access point. For example, uh, the, the very significant one is that the Apple devices perform differently than Android and then Windows. And that, that was observed. And sometimes we experience some um, competitive issue. We will just 
fix whatever we can. And sometimes it's uh, related to the chipset, then we uh, just feedback to the chipset and see if they have the solution. But generally speaking, we don't have an issue. Uh, but as, as Vince was saying, we were just speaking with a couple of clients. Some have, with the Apple operating system, there may be some tweaks or some issues that we have been able to resolve. Uh, but when it comes to the chipset, then we can talk with our engineers to determine if we can uh, write something to help support that. But for the most part, we don't have any issues with the uh, uh, with the access points capabilities in terms of being able to communicate to one another. Excellent. Thank you to both Ron and Vincent for that. Next question here for you. Can we go to your website and find, again, more information regarding not only, of course, troubleshooting, uh, product information, um, if your if TP-Link has um, uh, uh, access to uh, a forum and uh, for different discussions about your product, can we find all of that? Absolutely. Uh, normally, it's on our website under the partner portal, uh, and, and Microcom is a, is a partner. Uh, but anyone that has any issues with trying to find that information, my contact information is there. And so, Vincent, you can shoot us an email or give us a call. We won't have to direct you. But uh, uh, I will. Uh, I can send you, Julie, a link. It's just right to tp-link, tp-link.com, and you go up to the top and you look for partner portal, and that should give you all the information you need. We also have a forum there where you can chat, a chat forum where you can talk to different individuals, get information on how products have performed. So yes, that is available on our website. Excellent, thank you for sending that link. I will forward it on to anyone here at Microcom who um, would like to utilize it and have access to all of that information. Thank you so much for that. And uh, thank you for answering all of those questions for us this morning and for everyone attending today's webinar. Yes, thank you, excellent. Um, if anyone has any further questions, of course, please feel free to contact your sales rep or email us at sales at microcomtech.com. And please remember this webinar presentation has been recorded and will be uploaded to our Microcom YouTube channel so you can view it again. Thank you everybody for joining us today. We appreciate your time. Ronald and Vincent, thank you so much for all of that excellent information. Everybody have a fantastic day. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.